Hello and welcome back to the channel and to the workshop. Today we're going to be having a look at how to make this chopping board right here. So a nice hardwood chopping board with some chamfers underneath and a little bit of engraving. So stick around and I'll show you how to mark this out and I'll show you how to make it. <laughs> So welcome back, we're going to jump into this chopping board. I'm looking at the material I have on the desk here and I just made a decision after hitting the record button that I'm not going to use uh, this one inch piece of walnut, I'm going to leave that to one side. I've got two nice pieces here of walnut that are about 23 millimeters thick, they were both cut from a, a two inch piece and I've just ripped them in half on the bandsaw. I just did that before I started recording because there's no need for you to see that. But what I do like about these is they've really nice kind of grain pattern here on the face like flame kind of pattern. Uh, so I think I'm gonna do a face grain chopping board to keep this towards the top. Now I know there's advantages and disadvantages to chopping boards when you do them face grain, side grain, end grain, that sort of thing. But uh, I always have the plan to do a face grain chopping board here. So we're gonna stick with that. And it definitely means that we're gonna have the, the most effective use of this nice grain pattern so we can see that. The side grain on this is not overly attractive. I tend to keep side grain kind of chopping boards for pieces of maybe Paducah Purple Heart where you've got coloured strips going in between it. And then I will at some point be doing an end grain chopping board on the channel, just not today, because it's going to take a little bit longer than I'd like. Um, they're just a little bit more work in the, you know, cutting the strips and re-gluing them and stuff like that in the end grain chopping boards. But we'll definitely do that at some point in the future. So I've got my two pieces of walnut. I have a big piece of maple here in the middle. That's uh, about one inch, but it's been playing all around. I'm going to just cut a little strip out of that so that we have our, our contrasting woods. So in terms of the design, well, I'm going to follow the exact same design that I have on my Instagram from the chopping boards that I put up back in August. So um, I'm gonna have a large piece of walnut, little strip of maple, strip of walnut, strip of maple, and then another larger piece of walnut. And then try and keep these about as much material as I can on the length of this. This is 400. So if I can keep this between 360, 380, I'll be very happy with that. And then we'll put a little chamfer on the end of it then to make it uh, to make it look kind of nice, maybe do some engraving before the end of this video. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna jump over to the planer, just kind of plane some edges on this because I need I need to do that to get it to be able to work with the uh, the fences on the on the table saw and stuff like that. And um, once I have the planing done, then I'm gonna rip the strips, uh, and then we'll be jumping back over here to do some gluing up. So probably time lapse some of the planing and cutting just to keep this video down to a minimum. So uh, let's get to it. Okay, so what I did there was I just planed the face and one edge of the walnut on both pieces there, and um, because that's gonna be very important to me when I go to cut it on the table saw now in a second, when I go to rip the strips. And then I don't, didn't need to plane this here, this was already planned for me, but what I will do now is I'm going to cut that to about 400, so I can keep some of this for another project maybe, as opposed to ripping a full strip, that would be essentially useless. And then what I'm going to do is uh, rip all the strips so I'll do that now and then I'll be back to you.
Okay, we're back over here, not planned, but we are back over here at the Wolf Bench. Uh, the reason for that is I had two things to happen there, or two kind of changes to my plan essentially, while cutting, uh, ripping out the ships that I just wanted to talk about for a second. Um, first thing is, you saw me jump over to the bandsaw for the thin strip of uh, walnut. That was just too thin to be cutting on the table saw. I wasn't comfortable with that. Uh, secondly, I probably could have cut more of the strips in the bandsaw. I just like using that table saw. But then again, you do lose a little bit more with the care for the blades. So maybe something to consider going forward. I might start using the bandsaw more. Um, also then, I changed the measurement on this wider strip. I think I said 60 to 80 at the start of the video. It's definitely, that was definitely too thin. We're up at about 110 now. Um, I'd say 90 would probably be the smallest I'd do that. But because of the length of the board, I'm after making that 110. Just when I saw the measurement as I was cutting it, uh, once I had the fence at the table, so I said no, that, I had to change that. Um, and then the last thing is, you saw me during the video, uh, during the little clip there with the, the, me using the, the table saw, that when I was cutting the wider board, it started to kind of lift. So I just reached over with the um, push stick and just pinned it back to the table. That's something there that, you know, uh, could be dangerous if you didn't kind of pin it to the table. Probably should have had that push stick there to begin with. It stopped from lifting at all, but I, I kind of was surprised when it lifted. So um, you just live and learn, but you know, obviously because I'm using the push sticks there, I'm not taking any risks. Um, and that's why I use push sticks, because I like my fingers and I want to keep them. Um, right now, we're going to jump back to the planer, planer and thicknesser. I'm going to do some small bit of surface planing on some of the edges because I don't like how they fit together. Um, and then the sides that I'm 100% sure about then, I'll just run the other side through the thicknesser. So you'll see me do that probably in some sort of time lapse. And when we're back over here, we'll be ready to glue up. But I'd say that just looks really nice already. Nice contrast, nice big board as well. So let's go over to the plane and thicknesser and then... Um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we're back over the wall bench now. We've got the glue set up in front of me. Um, what we just did there was I did some thicknessing, got each of the individual strips down to a dimension that I was happy with. And then probably off camera, because I don't think I had the camera running for it, I ran one or two pieces over the surfacer just to get them to kind of sit flush against each other and avoid glue lines between the strips. Because you really want a nice kind of fit for that butt joint there when you're gluing it up. Now what we have in front here is we've got our clamps set up after doing a dry run, as I always do when I'm gluing up, I've got some glue blocks in to protect the timber from getting damaged from the clamps. Sheet of plastic underneath the board, above the clamps. It protects the table, but it also protects the board from getting marked from the clamps for any like staining or something like that. And um, because of the metal clamps, can sometimes do that. I know I used the uh, these clamps on walnut before, and I left a big black stain across them that I had to then take out with the thicknesser again, which wasn't nice. But sure, look, uh, the glue blocks then, they protect the timber from getting damaged by the clamps. Walnut's very soft, so I'd definitely be using them, but I tend to use them nearly all the time anyway. Uh, it's just some, you know, it protects the timber. It could, you know, require you to do some more finishing work or preparation for finish or painting after if you didn't use glue blocks. And considering they're just, you know, easy to cut, why wouldn't you? Got some glue here. Uh, got a nice little uh, brush to brush it on with wet cloth and some tissue. Uh, the wet cloth and tissue then will be to wipe off any excess or any drips or anything like that. When you push them together, you're gonna to get a lot of squeeze out. Um, and you know I can be a little bit uh, generous with the glue when I'm applying to the projects because I'd rather have too much and have the squeeze out than not enough and have a glue star joint. I know um, there's definitely gonna be woodworkers that don't agree with that, but sure look. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna bring you in for a closer look uh, so you can see me gluing up. And by the time we're chatting again, I reckon it'll be the, tomorrow when we've uh, left it blowing up overnight. So let's get to work.
Welcome back. So what you saw me just do there was I glued up the piece in a bit of a time lapse and I've left it dry for 24 hours. Um, so it's a day later. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take it out of clamps now and see where we're at in terms of how the, the bottom turned out and stuff like that. So let's do that. Okay, so obviously the back of it has quite a bit of squeeze out there that uh, you know we'll need to do a bit of work on to get rid of and stuff like that. Um, but I have to say it's not cooked. It's quite flat all around and the glue lines look really good. So you can't really see many glue lines on, the, on this side especially. I won't know about the back until I take that uh, the excess glue off. That's the only problem about having it glued down like that. Um, I know I put quite an awful lot of glue on it, but I'd rather be safe than sorry. So some of this then, this squeeze out will need to be uh, you know, taken off now. But it could be uh, cleaner, essentially. There is, there's definitely ways of doing this a little bit cleaner with a little bit less glue. Or I just don't, I don't believe in um, taking chances and doing an under gluing something. I'd rather have squeeze out and be able to squeeze out after. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take some of this off. Um, a little bit with a, maybe a jack plane or a scraper or something like that, probably do that off camera. Uh, and by the time you're kind of back to me, what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be thicknessing it and getting a, um, uh, getting it down to its final dimensions, essentially like that. So, um, yeah, well, I'm gonna get at that then, so. Okay, so we're back over the workbench now. We've got our chopping board planed or thickness flat rather. So it's flat all around. And I also then, you just saw me square it up on the table saw. So just took my cross cut fence, got one square edge, flipped it over, went in from the other edge then to keep that same edge against the cross cut fence. And then that same edge went up against the rip fence to just square the board all the way around. So I have to say, very happy with this now. It's really nice. The only slight kind of, I don't know, adjustment I had to make was we're down to about 70 millimeters in thickness, not the 20 that I'd like to keep them at, because I realized after I started thickness in that one of the pieces of walnut that I started with was already 20. So in order to get it uh, squared all the way around, or sorry, flat all the way around, and to get a nice finish on it, I had to lose three millimeters there. Not that big of a loss though, it's not too thin as a chopping board, definitely anything above 15 millimeters. Even though I like to keep them a bit chunkier, this is still a nice chopping board and will turn out really nice when we put the chamfer on the bottom of it. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna bring it over to the table router and we're gonna chamfer a 45 on the bottom of these. And then all we're left with is some engraving and some sanding and finishing. And uh, that'll be this project down. So let's jump over to the table router now and let's put chamfer on this. Okay, so we're over here at the laser. Um, here's my chopping board here, and the laser we're using is a GCC X252 Laser Pro. We're gonna do a little engrave like this here, just in the bottom right hand corner of our piece. So I'm gonna stop the talking, and I'm gonna set this up and start uh, lasering away. And then afterwards then, I'll bring you back to the workbench and I'll show you what I've done.
there we are. There's a little laser engraving done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to bring you back over to the workbench. I'm going to start some sanding and start talking about the finishing process. Well, we're back over the workbench now. We've got a piece laser engraved. We've got a little logo on it there. Um, and then we're going to do some sanding. Now, I'm not going to take you through all of the sanding here. I'll do some sort of time lapse so that you're not falling asleep watching the video. But what I will do is I will tell you now that I'm jumping straight to the 220 grit because I'm very happy with the finish on this from the planer blades. Uh, they're quite sharp. So I'll be using the, this sander here to do that. And then for the end grain, the soil, the chamfers, I'll do that all by hand. Um, so we'll fly through that now. I think I'm gonna bring you in for a closer look and uh, I'll do some sort of time lapse. And then by the time we're back chatting, it'll be time to put some mineral oil on this. Okay, so the sanding's done. Um, just a little correction on that there. I only used 220 on the top and bottom, but on the side and the end grain, I obviously had to use some 180 grit first because it would be too rough to just jump straight to 220 grit. Um, the reason for that is, as I said, the top of this had been planed, whereas that had been squared up on the saw afterwards and the chamfers had been done on the router table. So they needed a bit of 180 grit force. So I did that uh, and then went to 220. And we're all happy with this now. It's all ready for its first cup of oil. So what I have here is some mineral oil, got some lint-free cloths and some uh, kind of blocks to raise it up on. And what we're gonna do is we're going to do the first coat now, let it sit for a few minutes, buff it off after a few minutes, let it dry overnight, so cure overnight, and then come back tomorrow with a bit of wire wool, denib it, and then put a second coat on it. And we'll see how it looks then it could end up with two, three, four coats on it, repeating that same process over and over. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna bring you in for a closer look and I'll show you the, uh, the oiling of this uh, with mineral oil. Okay, here we have it then, project done and dusted. Um, there's our chopping board after it's been left to sit overnight, so the oil has cured into it. Um, I have to say, the oil looks really good, especially on the walnut piece in the bottom here with the, the grain pattern on that, that, that kind of flame pattern on the face that I, I wanted to keep and I spoke about at the start of the video. So, yeah, I consider that a success, but before we uh, wrap things up, we'll have a little bit of a chat about the finishing process there because there's a couple of things I wanted to talk to you about. So obviously, as I said, I left it to dry overnight. What you didn't see was after I put the oil on initially, I waited the five minutes that I said I would, and then I came back with a, a cloth and buffed it. So essentially just rubbed the piece with the cloth uh, to take off any of the excess oil that would be sitting on the surface. Because what happens is if you leave that, that kind of forms kind of like patches of maybe stickiness or kind of roughness. So that's buffed off, left overnight then to cure. The next day then, when you come back, the piece feels really rough. It doesn't feel like it did after it got sanded. Now, 
because that kind of happens because the um, the grain raises with the moisture in the oil, and what will happen is the grain is essentially sticking out through the oil surface. So what you do is then you come along and you cut it back with some wear wool. So just off camera before I hit the the record button, um, I just took some wear wool and just took the um, the kind of the rough grain off it again. De nibbed it is what it's called. So now what I'm going to do is after I finish uh, recording the videos here today. I'm going to take uh, some mineral oil, put a second coat on it, leave it to sit again, buff it, leave it to sit overnight, and repeat that process two or three times. Uh, each time that I come back to put a new finish on it, I'm going to take the wire wool and de nib it. There's no, there's no need for me to, to record that and show you that part. You've already seen it once, you don't need to see it uh, three times. But I'd say two or three coats is the kind of the right amount for a chopping board like this, because if I was to leave it like this right now, you'd still be able to feel too much of the, the timber. Uh, through the oil because the oil seeps in and soaks into the wood so three is usually the, the magic number when it comes to that that sort of finish now um i have to say you know really happy with this as i said at the start of this kind of clip uh, i really like the chamfers on the bottom that allow it kind of to be easier to be picked up um and you know it's it's just a really nice wide and long piece and then the contrast on woods look really good so that's the project done and dusted and um, as I said in the workshop vlog, it'll be two weeks between projects because I'll be spending two weeks maybe making more complicated and complex projects for these videos. In between then, every kind of second Tuesday, I'll put up a workshop vlog, which is like a progress report on how the project's going, as I did this week about this chopping board. Um, next project then is going to probably be some picture frames or photo frames or something like that. Um, and I'll probably be starting that then. This is it's Friday now, so I'll probably be starting on Monday. So it will be started before you even see this video, which will go live on Tuesday morning. Um, but yeah, that's that's really that. Uh, just to give you a bit of an insight in case you'd missed the workshop vlog and you're wondering why the uploads have gone from one week to, to having project bills every two weeks. So as I said, some picture frames on the way. And in the meantime, I'd really appreciate, you know, a uh, subscribe or a like on the video and stuff like that. It increases exposure means more people are going to see this at the end of the day like i've always said i'm not making any money out of this it's simply for a bit of fun uh, enjoyment and you know for educational purposes and stuff like that now if you want to see this chopping board after it's had the three coats and put into a presentation environment throw your eye over to my instagram because that's where i do all my photography work and i take photos of my pieces and uh, as i said in the spatula video i really believe that the um last step of any project like this is to put it in a nice environment and take a nice presentation photo so that's that that's us for today um, and look thanks for watching the videos thanks for uh, subscribing and if you haven't please consider uh, hitting the subscribe button there and hopefully i'll see you next time so thanks very much